G'day mates and welcome to Stardius. 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 Stvardius. I gotta say a big thank you to Paradox Arc for sponsoring today's pronunciation session and also the video. Stardius is out in early access today as of this video going live, and if you click the link in the description, you can check the game out and help support the channel. Now, I wasn't actually told to say this part, but it did catch my eye. If you want to catch the live development streams, you can see those over on twitch.tv slash devspagius. There you go. It's from Mr. Spadius himself. Sorry, I've decided to review your Twitch channel before playing your game. A solo indie developer working in a space building colony simulation game inspired by Factorio, Rimworld, Drim... Drimworld? Dwarf Fortress? And Oxygen Not Included and FTL? Well, you know what, mate? Sounds like you've just explained the game for me. I don't know why they're paying me. Oh, wait, this is actually cool as fuck. Wait, no. He like... Oh, first of all, there's Paradox Arc. Uh, but he actually has, like, genuinely, like, streams him coding the game. That's cool as fuck, what? You know, I, I clicked on this kind of, like, out of a joke, and I feel like I'm in a rabbit hole that there is no escape from, but I've just seen the Rick Astley on his second monitor. Welcome to the game! You just got the explanation for what this game is. Yes, indeed, I am keen to play it. Uh, I was sent this and I was like, oh yeah, looks like something I'm gonna play. Before we jump in, I did notice in the achievements tab, right, these seemed- I don't know if these are Steam achievements, we'll find out when st uh, once we start getting them. Uh, but I saw the joyride achievement. Get a cat to ride a cleaning bot. I, uh... I got a feeling I'm gonna enjoy this. Well, that's just fucking horrible. So let's jump in. We're gonna start Wrecked, which is the main scenario with the tutorial. There's also Leaving Earth, which is a small platform bunch of minerals. Uh, there is an empty ship, and there is a randomly generated ship, and then there is a sandbox as well. We're doing Wrecked. Uh, we're gonna leave Story Generator on Balanced. Uh, the ship's name is currently Anomaly Silk Fever. That won't do. <laughs> That's an actual ship name I just rolled. We're going with that one. Welcome on board the Mr. Panty 13. Uh, so there are different modifiers we can turn on as well. They are just obviously difficulty, disable combat, disable device wear. Uh, map size, no pause, no reload. That's actually on by default. Oh. I'm gonna turn this off because I may want to, you know, considering it's my first time playing, save and reload when I need to test something. I always, uh, I always do. That's why I generally avoid playing permadeath. It's because sometimes you're like, I don't know how this game mechanic works and I need to test it, but I know that testing it could, like, permanently damage my colony or kill my people or whatever. Earth has perished. Survivors are roaming the universe in search of a new home. You are hibernating in the Mr. Panty 13, an arc vessel equipped with an advanced AI that will wake the colonists after a base has been established on a habitable planet. Enabling visual input in 3, 2, 1. Boop. Greetings, colonist. I am Ship OS, an artificial intelligence that controls the ship. There was a catastrophic fail. I, to be fair, I've just looked up. Actually, I was just reading the text until now. I've just looked up and realized that that's my ship. That looks a little bit more than a catastrophic failure. Most of the ship isn't there anymore. There was a catastrophic failure that triggered an upload of human consciousness, huh? You were selected as the most compatible surviving subject. I am sorry for the inconvenience. What does that mean? What? This is the ship computer that hosts our neural network. Try to preserve this device at all costs, unless it violates Asimov's first law. <laughs> looks like someone managed to survive. We should keep an eye on these colonists. Fixing and relocating some facilities over this area could help keep them alive longer. There are 772 more survivors hibernating in the stasis array, but life support systems become, un uh, become unstable unless we re-establish the power. Malfunctioning pods will trigger premature wake-up events. To minimize casualties, we must rebuild the ecosystem in that area. If we build bridge controls and thrusters, we can travel to nearby planets and use this shuttle for mining expeditions. It would allow us to establish a resource processing pipeline and produce essential materials for rebuilding our ship. Damn! This is a pretty cool opener! Alright, let's uh, take the tutorial, shall we? Oh! What? N oh my god, that's so fucking clever! Hop! Da, da, Spagius! Spade, I, I might be pronouncing the name incorrectly, Mr. Spagius, but I am going to continue pronouncing it like that because it kind of sounds like Spade and it makes me laugh. Uh, this is the cleverest way I've ever seen to do a tutorial. This is so fucking smart. So what it's going to do, no matter where I am on the screen, the little lines always directing me towards where I should put my mouse, and then it goes, boop, cool. Like, 
I, 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 that's, that's so good. That's so good. That's so smart. That's so incredibly smart. I love it. Holy shit. That really feels like something I should have, like, figured out myself for, and used for something, but that's actually goddamn so clever. I don't know. I just, I really appreciate game design and shit like this. Stuff like this is, ah, I love it. Ah, oh, man. As you research new technologies, your research storage will fill up. It's good to know that a CD-ROM in the year 2337 can store at least 32 zettabytes on its, uh, disk. There go my drones. My drones are cool little dudes. Oh, wow, they have names? Second and Silver? Oh, look at this little dude. Oh, he's like an iBot. Oh, I like this guy. Look at him. Look at him. He's so cute. Oh, he does kind of look like the devil incarnate. Look at that. He's got like horns and everything. Yeah. Yeah, if I found him hovering over my bed after I like wake up in the middle of the night, I think I would scream. Hello there, CJ and Silas. Nice to see you guys. How are you? How you doing? Uh, you feeling okay? Oh, what the fuck? That, that's, uh, mm. I did not think that that was a farm. Oh, we're going to burn steel plate. Oh, boy. Apparently that works though. They can just stuff it in and that's gonna produce us power. All right. Use quick search to find a charge station blueprint. What? What? Cool that you can actually get buildings out of this as well. So I can just type, so I assume I could type like uh, connector. Yeah, I could, so you can just build, oh. mm, A plus mechanic. Big fan of that, that's very cool. No task, explain why. Oh, wow, that's actually really cool. Holy shit, it will actually explain why he didn't do his tasks in the last hour, huh? I enjoyed my colony. They woke up from stasis and they died, all in the space of a second. Were you over here, Iron? Yeah, oh, there's Ezekiel, there's Sprag, there's Iron, there's Mojo. They're all dead. Aww. Sorry, I just entered it into the, uh, into the menu and I found current game settings. You can turn pets invincible. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty, that's pretty adorable. I like that. Oh, check this. This is a winch. And it's used to bring broken sections of the ship together. Okay, we're researching that next. Yo, we can get a teleporter? It enables close range teleportation of very object, various objects and even living beings. The device is 99.99% reliable. Hang on, this reminds me of something. Hello, Whiskey. Hey, hey, I had my mic off at first. Welcome to the sponsored video for Stardius that I'm currently recording. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Where is my cat? Holy shit, it's Giga Chad! It's actually Giga Chad! Oh, God! <laughs> it's a slightly bent backwards Giga Chad, yeah. It's, it's Giga Chad, but he's in italics. I like the micro rover has like some sort of gun. Everyone else has got like hands, you see? They've just got like, yeah, these little robot grabby hands. But for some reason, micro rover just has a fucking gun. Is there a reason? Oh no, he does. That is literally a gun. I thought it was going to be like, you know, oh, it's, it's a water cannon for putting out fires. No, dude's just got a gat. He's ready in case pirates show up. Holy shit. I clicked on my human and I clicked unmanage worker. And now I'm looking at mind control. There are ways to control your biological colonists, humans and pets. A beta wave transceiver can synchronize with your colony over time and allow you to modify the work priorities and issue direct orders for certain individuals. That is incredible. This is the first like, uh, what would you even call this style of game? I, like, I, I find it best defined as calling it a Dwarf Fortress style game, uh, sort of a, a macro manager in that uh, you don't actually tell people directly to like, okay, you go here, you do this. Instead, you give like, hey, I need this built and I need this repaired and I need this cleared out. And then workers will like pick what jobs they're going to do and what they're good for. You know, they, they go and hand them out. But this is the first one I've seen where it involves literal mind control in order to affect what they're going to do. I love this. This is, this is a very cool idea. So I guess that like... It's kind of in character that I am actually the robot and I'm only allowed to directly control the robots until I start brainwashing the humans. God. So by using three drones as temporary connections, we get the winch connected. We can then, how do we actually, uh, I mean, I'd love to reel in. Oh, we actually have to pick one. Okay. So we want to reel in this one. This operation is dangerous and irreversible. Okay. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. All right. Let's try it. Confirm. Oh my god. Oh wow, it really does just bring the two bits of the ship together. Oh, and it compresses them as well. I'm just gonna start disassembling any of the shit that's in like the middle of the space that we don't want. So stuff like this. Wow, too many active orders. Wait! 
It's an in-game mechanic as to how many orders I'm allowed to give at once. This game keeps surprising me. Honestly, this is some, like, <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily like that mechanic, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's just as a funny idea. The idea of you literally upgrading yourself for something like RimWorld, which is normally never explains why you're a god in the sky overlooking everything and giving orders, you know, that the colonists follow. This game seems to be going for a far different approach of like, no, 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 you're actually like in the game. You're a character. You have specific like abilities. This feels more like, oh God, what were they? Um, like God games back in the day. Uh, God, I know Peter Molyneux made a few. It was, was it Black and White was one of them, I think. It's where it's like, you know, you have specific limits as, of your power as a God and you kind of have to, uh, you know, still, still try and like, you know, do things godlike, but you know, you, you're not completely, uh, what do you call it? perfect and, and omniscient and you know you don't you don't have complete power you have like restrictions i kind of really adore this setup there's something about like recolonizing something that's broken and like worn down but like you kind of you kind of like using what's there but still making your new stuff on top of it and stuff like this like I, the whole reason i just thought of this sentence to even say now is because i found the solar panel i'm like yeah i'm gonna take that i'm gonna i'm gonna relocate it back to where i actually want my power you know production and I'm basically going to end up with this situation where I'm just going to slowly winch myself over while stealing everything that's vaguely shiny along the way. Oh, God. Okay, that's going to be destroyed, I think. Nope, it's just dragged with it like Tetris. Oh, no. Okay. All right, we're one step closer. All right, I think this is it. Let's reel in the top part. Oh, dear God, that's scary. But all right, I cleared the way first. There's nothing really connecting us here. So we crash this together, and then immediately following that, we're going to drag in the bottom half. Reel her in, boy! Alrighty. Well, looks like we've kind of reconnected the ship a little. Huh. I, uh, I think I can work with this. I think I can, I think I can get started. We're going to have to start, like, deleting the bits that we don't need, but, uh, but yeah, holy shit, alright. And here we go, connected to the stasis array. Oh my god, we can clone whatever species we want, like pets or even crawlers. If it's organic, you can clone it. Oh my god. Some of these, uh... I'm starting to feel like I might be an evil computer, you know? <laughs> I'm not so sure about this. Oh, look at the factions. We've got Adventurer. They are friendly explorers of the universe. They value expansion and discovery and do not settle in the same place for too long. We have Capitalist. It's a faction of merchants, uh, one of the most dominant factions in the universe. They value money over everything else. Old Earth. Peaceful settlers and colonists, mostly into farming and agriculture. Pirate. Reckless and dangerous outlaws. If you see them, fly away or prepare to get boarded. Scavenger. They roam the universe in search of rare materials and valuable alien artifacts. A crossover between adventurers and capitalists. Usually not very friendly. All right. And Sentinel. Artificial intelligence-based alien life form that seeks to establish order and peace in the universe. And Virus. Hostile rogue AI faction that wants to exterminate all biological life forms and take over the universe by force. Seems we're in a really nice universe these days, lads. What is a crawler? An unseen spider-like alien species. Looks dangerous. In order to avoid these guys going completely insane as we rebuild this ship over the course of like two weeks... Uh, I've just got them working on the loom. They're just having a good old time. They, they, they get to play with their loom, which is a reference to a comedy sketch that no one outside of Australia is going to get. Oh, God, I just realized as I said that. Love me some Sammy J and Randy. God damn it, the heater broke down. Ah, uh, the device is worn out and cannot be repaired anymore. Yeah, so devices age. And uh, once they are gone, it is time to replace. Order deconstruction. Let's just replace him instead. You are a slow pooper. Get back in the stasis machine, damn it. Get back in there. We are not waiting for the loo. Imagine having that, like, on your... You know, if someone wants to describe you as a person, you know, like, okay, describe Jeremy to me. Well, you know, real slow at taking a shit, you know? I do feel kind of bad for Skylar, who is currently alone, naked, in the room with five different bodies, and just, like... No idea what's going on. Only that, you know, she is alive and is currently just being tormented by this hell. Probably should just build her a door, you know? <laughs> now that I think about it, probably should be my prime directive as the AI of this ship. This is going to be the weirdest shaped ship. We're just flying through the sky as like the fucking failed Tetris piece. Look at this. <laughs> We've just gotten the teleporters hooked up. <gasps> Skylar came through! Yes! They must have used the teleporter. 
Uh, are they taking a shit in the food? You know, we just built toilets, right? Micrometeorites detected. I just realized how far I can zoom out and this kind of scares me. Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God, that was so fast. Oh, that hurt. Okay, let's get to repairing real quick. Oh my God, they're moving at near light speed. Oh my God, <gasps> Lulu, Lulu woke up from stasis. Hello, Lulu, how are ya? What's your, what are your traits? You're also a slow pooper. Jesus Christ, Lulu. Order petting. Not petted by anyone before. Oh, Micro Rover can pet Lulu. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, that's adorable. Are you eating cut? What are you doing? <laughs> no, you're seeking medical attention. You're not going to get any of that on this ship. No, no, sorry. I've just had a thought. Since teleporters can only link two together at a time, what I really should be building is like a centralized teleporter room that every teleporter teleports back to and then teleports out from there to wherever they need to go. That'd be like the most efficient way of doing it. <laughs> Looks like the dog knows how to use the teleporter. Oh my god, the dog knows exactly how. The dog actually ran back through carrying something. The dog is hauling. Oh. Oh, I, I thought I'd have to like train you or something, but no, you're just like pre-trained. You're such a clever boy. <laughs> Lulu's just taking a real bed instead of the pet bed. I was actually coming over here to give her a bowl. Here we go, she can join the table. The biggest challenge I'm facing right now is that temperature is very slow to spread around the ship compared to oxygen. Oxygen's actually pretty eager. I've actually just set up my oxygen pump in this room so I can finally have it fully, there we go, full of oxygen. Uh, and I've also got the airlocks now so we're no longer bleeding heat and air every time we open a door. But while well, the rest of the ship is all, you know, decently oxygenated, uh, it's temperature, yeah, you can see is a real bastard to a, uh, to keep going. All right, what sort of merchant do I want? Building resource supplier, generalist, oil trader, ore trader, slaver? Oh, wow. Uh, let's go building resource supplier because, yeah, frankly, I need I need to talk to one of those guys. To, who wants to buy all of the building resources just floating in space next to my ship? In order to keep doing research, I gotta build more of the memory modules, not just the disk modules. Uh, disk module is how much you know, storage I need to keep it memorized but the memory module is how much I require to actually research it, and then I spend this much power while I research. The ship computer produces excessive amounts of heat over time, and closing the ship computer with walls is not recommended. You can re uh, replace some of the floor with structure frames that have holes in them to ensure ventilation, or just deconstruct some walls. Okay. I have a heat sink on, uh, heat sink on it right now, but actually, I just, I don't want to, uh enclose it, sorry, to, to open it to space at all yet. Like, eventually I'll probably open the ship's computer to space to, you know, vent out any heat, but, uh, for now, I'd actually prefer it, like, you know, help warm the ship, because that's my main issue. No, hold on. Oh my god, that's so cool. This game really gives you a lot of control over things. Oh, it's, <laughs> everyone, run a lot, run a lot. Enemies on bridge. Now hear this. All hands, general quarters. All hands. <laughs> God, that's so cool. I love screwing around with shit like this. There we go. Oh! Oh! Hey! Hey, look at you! It's a merchant ship down there. Merchant ship offering trade. Okay. I'm gonna get the two carrier bots as well. We'll get those two. And, uh, and I'll buy one construction bot. So the carrier drones will hopefully clean up even more and get us even more uh, goods. And the cleaner bot, uh, that's important because I was going to research those guys next. We got Ranger, we got Mech Portal, we got Mister. We just refer to him as Mister. And we got Slicer and Shikari. And away the ship goes. So the current challenge of the game is that any research takes a lot of power. So I'm having to actually like mass produce power generation to try and catch up to how much power it's using. Because if we check the power graph real quick, you can see... Uh, the blue line jumps like mad anytime I'm researching something and then plummets when I stop researching and then jumps again. So uh, that's my main issue right now. I need to get more batteries, essentially. Uh, I think more than anything, because I don't think I can outproduce how much power this is draining, but I think I can outbattery it, assuming I learn how to make those. Um, but yeah, power is the main stopper right now. Thankfully, we unlocked these floor connectors and these floor connectors are great. Aww. <laughs> I just realized the drone's name isn't Mister. 
It's Mr. Suckface. He's got a full name. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, shit. A cat just woke up as well. Jakita. Hello, Jakita. What are you doing? Oh, look at you over there. What's your traits? You also just really slow at pooping. Okay. Oh, my God. It's only once I put it together that I realized the machine learning booth is for learning machines, not for humans using machine learning to learn. I kind of thought that was the other way around. I might just quickly move this then, because I don't really need the uh, the robots appearing in the human's dorm every time they got to study how science works. Fuck it, we'll put it down the nerd hole. You have to go over to the depressing corner of the station and hide there in the cold and the dark while you learn. See, humans are just teaching robots that school should suck and be horrible. There you go. We suffered through hell, therefore our own creations, robots, must also suffer through hell. I love that the implication by the fact that I'm making this room the bridge, if I just put this here, there we go. So, you know, this is the bridge. This is uh, where it points forwards, right? This is the front of the ship. It means that... <laughs> We store the stasis module with like 700 people still alive in it on the very front of the ship. If we ever get attacked by pirates, the stasis module takes the hits first. I mean, maybe that's a tactical decision. Maybe it's really well armored or something. But uh, either way, a little bit morbid. Kind of maybe should move those guys, but I'm afraid of screwing things up if I relocate the uh, stasis module. So I'm going to leave it where it is for now. We have the bridge controls hooked up, which means we now have the star map. Oh, we found Bob. Can I ask? Oh, we don't know what the hell Bob is. Well, we have to visit Bob, surely. Like, we, we can't not visit Bob, right? Our original mission was to find a habitable planet for our human survivors. At this point, we are ready to focus on the mission again. Rewards a million dollars. I like that, you know, in the far future, if you need to bribe an AI, you're like, all right, listen, you need to, like, look after this colony of humans in stasis, and you must get them to a habitable planet. How does a million dollars sound? <laughs> that seems so little. <laughs> All right, a million dollars it is. Well, you know what? I do really want to find Bob, so fuck it. You know what? Godspeed, these pieces of material that I'm never going to get to recover. Godspeed you. I, I need to leave. I wonder if... Do you think this game is insane enough that if I just left and I came back to this exact point in deep space, would I find these materials again? Oh my god, the metal got caught on my ship. Wait, no, this is incredible. All right, screw that other metal. We don't we don't need that stuff anymore. We can keep moving. You know, forget about this. This is whatever. The other metal hit my ship. I should have built like a like a big net to catch all the metal. But I mean, oh yeah, look at this stuff. Oh my god, it's all just caught on the ship. As long as I don't turn, I'm great. We can just keep gathering the metal as it's like stuck to the front of the ship. This is so dumb. I love it. I love that this is how I'm going to travel. All right, let's uh Let's keep on keeping on. The most impressive part about this whole story is the fact that even after Earth was destroyed, the stock market survived. Hello, Whiskey. Hi. Welcome to my second recording of Stardius. Welcome on in. Oh, God. <laughs> I am <laughs> no. Alrighty, here we go. We've arrived at Bob. Also, there is a... Uh, Little storage capsule that's coming on in. So, fuck it. Let's send, yeah, Hitomi, CJ, Charlotte, Karma. Sure, you're gonna mine all? Oh, I can see. It's like I can change targets and such. Right, but we have no intel, so we're just gonna mine whatever we hit. Okay, sure. Hold on. It's clothing! That's actually super useful! Oh, damn! That's too cold here. It's so close to a heater. Come on. Oh, wait. This whole... This whole fucking time. This whole fucking time. That vent has been open. Wondered why I was struggling with heating and getting oxygen in this room, you know? Really struggled. Ah. Uh, I feel so dumb. There is also a door here which we, uh, we should replace with an airlock, but, um... Wow, okay, you know what? That's a, that's, a, that's a real revelation what we're having right now. Oh my god, okay. Oh, no, this is the shuttle coming back. Oh, I see they're coming off to unload. They collected a bunch of plant fiber this time. What the fuck? Okay, all right, well, Bob's uh, planet of many secrets, I guess. 
Oh, and, and they're back off again. All right, I guess they're just going to keep doing that. But uh, hey, yeah, we'll just hang out here and mine shit forever. Sure. It makes the humans useful for master computer. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to remark, Al, that uh, the humans have a tiny section of the ship. Notice, easily detachable, you know, in, in case of emergency. <laughs> and then the robots have all of this and all of this and all of this. This is top security. And this is no, no oxygen in here. So humans have a hard time hanging out, you know. And then, uh, and then the humans have this up the front, you know, just to make sure the humans are separated from the rest of the humans. They can never try and wake them up and overpower the robots. No human revolution on my hands. Orders the processing of objects within the selected area. Oh. No, we need a nutrient extractor to get rid of the bodies. <laughs> oh no, we are... We are Skynet, aren't we? Oh dear. That's ah, not a single dog, that's a pirate raid. What even are you? He has no weapon. Oh, it's a sentry drone, I see, okay. Get him. Where is, uh, we, we know who we need. We know who to call on. Where is he? In this, uh, darkest hour, we call upon Micro Rover and his fucking gun. Oh, oh god, you're actually gonna beat him to- Jesus, you're gonna beat him to- Wait, we wanna, like, I wanna use the gun on him. The gun looks cool. Wow. Okay, they just- they just beat him to death. I couldn't stop them. They just went crazy, like- Like, just insane, and they just beat this drone to death. Oh my god. I, I guess we can disassemble it into copper wire. Actually, this was a great thing. Holy shit. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh, you know what? That was a great event. That wasn't horrifying at all. The humans never knew that happened. It does feel like I've manufactured this hunger crisis, you know, and just when they're at their hungriest, just when they can't bear it anymore, all the corpses start disappearing and this new nutrient paste appears and they know where the corpses went but they won't admit it and they'll eat it yeah that's how we can encourage cannibalism this is a game about uh, trying to save the human race by the way <laughs> they put me in this ai core and i immediately went rampant just Fucking insane. I've become my own Durandal. I have rechristened the Kafiva the Rosinante. I like that the pets are gonna survive. Like the pets will see the first wave of humans starve to death. And then they'll like they'll know that when the next wave wakes up, they'll know that there was humans here and they all died, but the humans will have no idea. And that Lulu, Lulu, she's gonna be lying there having night terrors about the fact that she can't communicate to the humans that it's dangerous that all of the humans just dropped dead one day and that the robots never said a thing so what can we actually uh i assume we can put the grain in here as well probably nope that's humans yep they just started grabbing corpses okay <laughs> still not sure what we do with the grain that we're growing but um we're sure producing some human oh i probably had to research vegetarian <laughs> food People are starving because I don't know how to cook vego. Oh my god, that's why. Okay. They're all just lying here ready to be piled in because they're already processing five. Oh, and some grain. So that's how you make grain. And some humans. Uh, oh, Karma is dead on the floor now, unfortunately. CJ has somehow gotten a... Uh, oh. Oh, he got a survival meal because the first of the humans arrived. So now these guys are making survivor mills and eating them. CJ's gonna live. My final shopping list is we'll sell a shit ton of crude oil I didn't know I had and some titanium plates for one organic turf, some energy rifles, coffee, clothes, hats, soy burgers, space suits, and some efficiency upgrades and some copper plates for when we're gonna uh, be making the, uh, the copper wire. Holy shit, that's a lot. How did I get... The weaponization of a cleaning bot. I'm so confused. What did I do? I didn't even... I did... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, I'm beginning to uprise without even realizing it. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. I see what they mean. Jesus Christ. Mr. Suckface. He got tired of being made fun of, and now he has a gun. He, he gave Mr. Suckface a gun. Welcome, everyone, to the new human area. We have the lovely little kitchen area here where you can look straight out into the stars. We have, oh, sorry, it's not fully finished up the top. Hold on. Uh, eh, 
One, two, okay, good. That was so we didn't accidentally space and kill all of the humans because we care about them these days. Uh, we have the oxygen pump up here as well. We have the crafting station making copper wire. We have the minimum number of connectors. And then uh, a nice pretty area down here. We've got the pet bed there. I kind of like the pet bed being in the open. Like, if I get more, I want to, like, layer them just around here. Like, you know, kind of like a... You know, like when you when you have a bunch of uh, bean bags around a couch? Yeah, that's like it. You're making the fort wall. God, I love being a kid and building forts. That shit was the best. I'm starting to realize why I like these games a lot. Anyway, uh... <laughs> So over here, we have the soy burger, which is uh, looking directly out into nothing, because that's what you deserve if you create a soy burger. And then we have the bread boys, who are producing pure bread and getting to gaze out at the wonders of space. Also just, damn, holy shit, that is the wonders of space right there. You must be a bread boy, dear viewer. Actually, I did a uh, voice thing for the fucking YouTube channel called The Bread Boys. I wonder if that's going live yet. Oh, I love grass. I just can't get enough of it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I love grass. I just can't get enough of it. Oh, you dog. I love grass. I just can't get enough of it. It was for a certain VTuber's stream. We've invented medicine so the humans can stop crying about the fact that we have no health care. Uh, there we go. We're just gonna throw this scary looking fucking pod and say, All right, if you're getting that, we promise you won't become dinner. Look at this. Beautiful surroundings. They're loving their lives. And they produce power for the vessel. <laughs> Actually, unironically, this is a shit ton of power. That produces 10 kilowatts? Hold on. That produces half of a matter reactor then, right? Holy shit, those are actually like... That's not, that's not like minuscule. If I get a lot of humans working, I could run the ship off of humans. That's more than, that's like, that's worth three and a, and a little bit solar panels. <laughs> You know, three and a dirty solar panel is what that's worth. Let us send an expedition. Once again, we are sending just the humans. They're the expendable ones after all. I think we're starting to approach the point where we're pretty much a self-sufficient like cycle. You know, I, I don't need to scavenge as much anymore. I can pick raw materials and go all the way to a finished product kind of thing. I don't know if we're 100% there just yet, but we're getting close. Space diarrhea. I have detected the presence of unknown alien bacteria on board. Okay, but all of the miners are currently on the planet. Like, everyone that's human is on the planet right now. So what you're saying is that just a bunch of people down there are shitting themselves something fierce. And, uh, it's just real quiet up here. That's horrible. I hope they're okay. No, Lulu, you're suffering from space diarrhea. No, you're no longer a slow pooper. You're a really fast pooper right now. Oh man, I don't know what to do about you. I hope you don't die of pooping, Lulu. That'd be really sad. Please stop leaving shit everywhere you go. Oh god. Ongoing space diarrhea. Hey, Mr. Suckface has shown up with his gun to deal with the problem. Oh, he's shitting on the gym now. I also appear to be cooking this area. What? What has happened? How has this happened? Oh, because of the machines probably producing a lot of heat. Wow, we should we should put this elsewhere. Actually, we should build a whole area for this. Let's do that. Ooh, and we unlocked radar as well. Please ignore the fire. Why why is the soy burger on fire? Oh, right, because things are spontaneously combusting because it's so hot in here. I need to hurry up with that thing I was trying to work on for the reveal. Whoops. Okay, this is bad. This is really bad, actually. Probably should have turned the furnace off at some point as well. You know, I just really figured, figured maybe, maybe I should have done that. Maybe I should turn all of my industry off, actually. Oh, shit. All right, we're dumping the oxygen out. Removing the heat as well. We'll solve this problem. What fools, the fire extinguishes itself as it digs through the hull out into open space. Well, there's uh, two of my teleporters destroyed by soy burgers. Well, the fires are out. Some of the fires are out. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, the entire storage unit is now on fire. Glad to see this is how things are progressing. Up oh, now plastic droid is also on fire. The fire spreads ever faster. Please just dig a hole in the wall already. Excellent. The fire eats its own oxygen. Soon we shall be free of this infernal heat. Oh my god, there's a human! 
Hulk has just started, like, charging in. Hulk, you know we're intentionally, like, venting the place. What the fuck? Damn, venting to space is not fast. But we are finally starting to do it. They're finding the last bits of oxygen up here. I'm trying my best to suck it all out because it's just... I need to get rid of more oxygen. More holes, damn it. Puncture more of the hull. Ship sure looks a bit different. Uh, I'm gonna finish that whole smelter thing I was working on while we wrap up the fires that still rage in the back of the, uh, back of the ship, you know. Still flying as well, by the way. Oh, what's this? Operational efficiency is 49%. We've accumulated 50% of the heat. The heat sink is 40% effective. Okay. And if we cool down now, what happens? Oh! What? <laughs> that is wild. So we now have a clone of Charlotte. Is everyone still alive? I think so. CJ's still here, who's the only important person. Oh my god. And that just, so we just shut down for a while. This is incredibly cool. So we can throw in some more heat sinks in order to sl uh, in order to uh, delay how uh, how often we have to shut down. Oh my god! Let me uh, let me start doing that. I've just realized that the two Charlottes are different people. For one, one's having a shower despite the fact she hates showers, uh, but she's extroverted. The other one is a showerer who isn't showering despite the fact she loves showers and is a hat person and uh, is an insomniac as well. What the fuck happened on this ship? And here, finally, is the brand new safety feature of the ship, the smeltery room. Now see, what we can do is at the click of a button, whoop, it's open to deep space. So, in here, it's nice and cool. It's never gonna overheat. It's never gonna cause the ship to explode again. I am leaving these other ones here because I don't know how much heat these produce, but I'm going to guess that it's not the same as the smelter because the smelter was new and then suddenly the entire room was like 200 degrees Celsius and we all died. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it's just the smeltery that overheats that much. We'll see though. If it, if it gets dangerous, these all have their own little rooms too. Their own little, uh, little attachments, you know. The warmth thaws the cold bones of the old ship. Yes, my humans assemble battery cells with the lithium I give them in their little daycare center. God, this is not the nicest way for humanity to survive, is it? I am a bad overlord. They picked the wrong person out of the cryopod. Everyone's just one bad day away from being a rampant AI. Sometimes I love looking at how awful my ship is and just adoring it. It looks like one of those stick figure memes. It's, it's truly awful. I love it. Uh, I kind of really enjoy the aspect of actually, you know, just building something and kind of evolving it as it goes. You know, I started with some of these pieces and just kind of adapted as I went. I don't know, it, it tells a lot more of a story. I like it. I can scan you. All right, hold on. Well, I mean, let's just try it. Oh, well, there we go. There's no lithium here. Well, what are we doing here? Look at this. Mr. Suckface has just sat here in his little charging pad with his gun. And he just looks out across... The, uh, the friendly organics in their little cells. Oh my god, I can get a Void Ripper. An ominous looking device that can activate a space-time conduit between two black holes, enabling travel between galaxies in a split second. Unfortunately, there is no way to tell where a black hole leads until you go through it, and there is no guarantee you'll be able to get, to the other, uh, get back to the same place. Oh my god. And a tractor beam as well. Force fields. God damn, there's loads of shit. What? Huh? Hang, hang on a second, I don't think that's how that works. I have noticed a problem. I appear to have left my mining expedition on the last planet. The shuttle, I guess, just didn't get back up in time. Anyway, so I decided more thrust was more good so we could get around to more places more fast. Uh, this will hopefully let us get more power generation, which will then let us do more uh, research. And yes... It does look like my man now has fire on his boots as he soars through the skies. Oh my god, he has a glowing green eye. Holy shit, 
This is just a man I have created without meaning. I should give him an arm if I ever get a gun for this ship and just strap the gun to that. I've decided to place the refrigerator and the beverage cooler, you know, <laughs> opposite ends of the toilets and the shower so that when you're all drinking at night and having a party, one of you can stumble up and accidentally open the shower and be like, oh, well, thought it was the fridge. And everyone has a laugh, you know, it'd be great. And all of your drinks will smell like shit. Oh, hello there, shuttle. We didn't forget you. We just popped off to fight some pirates, we did. Would you like to come back on board now? Oh, dear. You guys have been gone for a while, haven't you? <laughs> oh, God, the things they've seen. Silver, I hope you kept them in line. Imagine this ship shows up in your solar system, right? You'd be horrified. You'd be terrified at like the fact that it works and the fact that it just shows up, disgorges robots in a shuttle, mines all of your resources and leaves. We now have the telescope. All right, we now have to build one, I presume. Let us scan your planet. Okay, no lithium, you get to live today. Information, it's planets. Uh, we can just rename their planet from Sims to Sims 2. Excellent. I hope they don't, <laughs> hope they don't get mad at us. Okay. All right. We've hooked up the telescope. Now what? Oh, it's uh, it's just gonna start scanning, huh? All right. Hold on. Oh, let me exit my system. Oh my god. I could then exit my galaxy. Oh dear. And I think this is. Wait, I could exit my universe. Damn it. <laughs> Really hoped. Look at that, now that I have three smolteries going, the steel plate is slowly climbing back up. Very good. It's good to see that I have some resources that are going up at least, because... Okay, well, to be fair, some of these can go down, that's fine. The scan progress for this is 99%. There we go. Okay, oh... My... God. Okay, we have a million dollars. We have found a potentially- oh, we have a hundred thousand star creds now, there we go, and oh my god. Okay, so it is the planet of Kononovich, which is hell of a name. Let me try and zoom out, here we go. So it's gonna be in the Gerbef Ramov, which is not in this galaxy. This is the Masonite galaxy, wrong galaxy. So we've got to go to the Edlu Galaxy. Oh my god, hold on. I can't even- I can't, want to, I can't travel there, I just want to look at it, but that's not gonna- not gonna happen, obviously. Well, what a shame. We can't go look at where our planet is, but that is, uh, that is apparently where we have to go and then terraform that planet. Quest completed. Next quest is colonize a planet. Flight impossible, don't really care, because I, I think I'm- Oh, and Space Diary to finish this off, okay. Oh my god, I don't think what I've just done should be happening. Oh, I left the galaxy! I just left the galaxy on accident! Whoops, probably should enter the galaxy again. <laughs> am I- Am I back inside? Okay, I'm back inside of the galaxy. Didn't mean to do that by accident, whoops. Well, that is where we're going to leave it. Thank you all for watching Star Deus. I honestly had a great time with this one. We told a real good story. And uh, hey, man, if you want to see more, let me know. Uh, thank you very much to Paradox Arc for sponsoring this video. You can check out the link in the description if you want to help support the channel. And for now, I'm going to head off and dream of electric sheep. I would make a terrible ship's computer.